breathing and ice therapy training where we are in the ice for 10 minutes up to our neck um, breathing and exposing ourselves to the cold we also hiked four hours in a mountain that was about 50 miles an hour wind at the top minus 22 celsius and with no clothes on just shorts hats gloves and shoes so exposing our legs and our chest and face to the wind and the cold and pelting us with hail, essentially, at the top. How important is heat therapy and cold therapy to aging or anti-aging? Uh, I want to hear all about this story. <laughs> this sounds fascinating. We de definitely tell, tell us more about that. Yes. Uh, but yeah, so when I started writing the book, um, my editor said, you got to talk about this cryotherapy mm -hmm. uh, and also sauna. And it's, that's not science, it can't be real. Uh, so I looked into it. Uh, and we'd also actually, I must admit, we'd done some work on cold already. Uh, one of these sirtuin protective genes, not number one that I talked about, but number three, responds to cold and actually mm. turns on healthy production of what's called brown fat. Uh -huh. So the more I looked into it and the more I can pondered my own research, I thought maybe being cold does help your health. Not, not internally, you're not going to freeze internally and right. be cold, but on your skin, you're going to, and just under your skin, you're going to have what's called brown fat, which is full of energy producing um, and heat producing mitochondria, the battery packs of cells. And those mitochondria are really dense and it's one of the reasons that they, it, that brown, not white fat. And the brown fat, it's not like normal fat where you, you're just storing energy. It's actually metabolically active, so mm, it's, burning it's burning energy. Mm. But it's also seemed to be healthy because it's secreting these little proteins that tell the body to stay young. We mm. don't know what they all are, but there's a lot of evidence that it's having that. it. Stay right. young. Well, yeah, so brown fat is found mainly in babies. Because wow. they can't shiver. Little babies, did you know? They <laughs> I don't can't know shiver? Is it, why can they shiver though? I don't know. It's weird. How old it? do you become until you can shiver for the first time? Well, I don't know. Uh, I'd have to guess, but, but newborns don't shiver and they have to use this brown fat. They're full of it. But as we get older, we lose it. In fact, it, when I was, uh, you know, 20 years ago, when I was just starting out, people thought there was no such thing as brown fat in adults. And then they did PET, PET scans, and found that this brown fat it was mostly in people who were cold mm. uh, and experiencing cold, and found across the back mainly. So you can recreate brown fat exactly. as an adult. Yes, or beige fat. You can turn your white fat into brownish fat by being really? cold. By, by how, do we know how much cold therapy you need to do? Is it once a month? Is it once a week? Is it daily? Is it for a certain amount of time? Well, we're still figuring that out, okay. but it seems like the more the better, unfortunately. Really? So what you were doing sounds perfect. So like every day doing a cold shower or an ice plunge for a couple minutes a day or just something like that helps generate brown fat, which is a layer of mitochondria, dense mitochondria under the skin, which helps you burn more fat. Yeah. Is that what it is? That's a good way to put it. Okay. It's designed to keep you warm, but it also is telling the body, hey, times are tough. We could, we could freeze to death. Mm. Adversity, right? What doesn't kill you makes you live longer. Oh, that's a good one. So put your body through pain throughout your life as consistently as possible. Like controlled pain, right? Going in a sauna for 15 minutes and pushing an extra minute, like that feeling of adversity, going in cold, working out hard, doing something where it's a, you're not gonna kill yourself or hurt or break a leg, but it's like discomfort. Is that what I'm hearing? That's the most important lesson. We call it hormesis. And it's, it's basically, your body will be complacent if you don't tell it to work hard. And the problem with our society is everything is designed to be comfortable. comfortable. Yeah. That's what we strive for. You know, I was, I was coming here, uh, flying out, and I'm looking at all the roller bags and thinking, and I, I'm carrying my two bags here, and I'm thinking, should I put it down? No, I'm gonna walk with my bags, because that's what people used to do. Yeah. But you know, these days, everything is it's all easy. about comfort. Constant food, don't exercise, don't be cold yeah. ever. <laughs> it's crazy. We're, we're killing ourselves. We're accelerating our aging process. So you've got to get out of that comfort zone. We're killing ourselves by being comfortable. Right. So is there too much, like if I'm cold therapy and hot and fasting and doing a HIIT workout, is there such thing as too much discomfort in your life that will start to age you? I don't think so. So I could fast, be in the cold and the heat, 
two minutes of sun, like do all these things in a, in a day, do it consistently, carry my bags everywhere, and you think it'll make me younger. I think your, your rate of aging will be slowed down dramatically. Wow. Skip a meal or two a day, yeah. as much as you can. Yeah, I mean, there's no question in my mind that this would work. Wow. Give you an extra, at least 15 years, maybe 25.